Welcome everyone to Cheese in Depth. I'm Michael Landis and today we are talking with Debbie and George Crave. And today we're sponsored by the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin with over 1,200 licensed cheesemakers and the only state that requires a license to make cheese. They're also the only place outside of Europe with a master cheesemakers program. So today I'm talking with Debbie and George Crave with Crave Brothers Farmstead Cheese. And George happens to be a licensed Wisconsin cheesemaker. So I'm going to take this time to introduce you to both of them and uh, go ahead and get started here. Welcome, Debbie and George. Hello, Michael. Welcome. Thank you. Well, yes, well, welcome to Crave Brothers Farmstead Cheese. We're here in Waterloo, Wisconsin. Uh, South Central Wisconsin, right between Mass and Milwaukee. Uh, it is Cray Brothers Farmstead, which means we have the farm, the land, and we'll talk about that as we go through our through the afternoon here. But we have uh, the uh, crops, the cows, cheese, the consumer is what we really do. And we've been at the cheese making business here for about 18 years in Waterloo. About 20 years ago, we just said, what are we going to do besides just milk more cows and and uh, and grow more corn and hay? So we just I uh, just about 2001, and, uh, and here we are. So right now we're using uh, quite a bit of our milk from our 2,000 cows. And maybe you want to talk a little bit, George, about the farm okay. yeah. and the owners, because we're so lucky to have some of the next generation as part of our family farm business. Well, it is a farm business. It is a family business, which is owned by my brother Charlie, myself, my brother Tom, and Mark, uh, uh, brother, and uh, we have uh, Andy, nephew Andy, our son Patrick in the middle there, uh, my brother Mark right in the middle, myself, Jordan to the to a little bit to the, the right, and then Charlie. So that's that's who's in the business there. Uh, our son Brian works at the cheese factory. He's a licensed cheese maker at the cheese factory. And our daughter, of course, works with us. Our, our niece Beth, maybe many of you know our niece Beth, it's a customer service quality here at the cheese factory. So uh, it is a family business, but between the farm and the cheese factory, we do employ a lot of really key staff people that uh, make up about 90 people of our support staff at the cheese and the farm. And George mentioned crops to cows, cheese to consumer. We have a wonderful mural on our cheese factory that tells that story, and you got a little shot of it, and you would see it if you were driving down our country road. Right. Uh, Right, that's right at the end of the west end of our cheese factory, and we like to talk about when people come to to our factory. And uh, unfortunately, we have to do it virtually, but this is really going to—you're going to see what we really have here. And you see on the one side is the crops and the cows, and the the uh, cow is is pinnacle in everything we do here, converting our our crops, our corn, alfalfa, soybeans, wheat into milk. And then it comes over to the cheese factory where we make our fresh mozzarella, our mascarpone, our cheese, fresh Wisconsin cheese curds, and our award winning mascarpone. And then we put it on a truck and it heads from coast to coast, from Miami to Seattle, uh, New York, down to uh, San Diego every week. So uh, we are a national distributor. And it's summer in Wisconsin, so we have wonderful pastures and we're so lucky to have our cows out. And yet we have winter here and it's icy and snowy for many months. So of course we have barns and really good housing for our cows, but we have a, a nice slide showing some of the cows out in pasture, the open air barns that they live in, and then our biodigester system. And this is a really important part of our story, this whole green energy story we're trying to tell. And um, I thought that George might share a little bit about that green energy story and um, what a biodigester is. Right, well, our, our cows, uh, we harvest all the feed from about 3,000, 4,000 acres that we farm, feed it to the cows, they make the milk, and what goes in must come out. Uh, and what comes out is their manure and waste, and so we take the waste from the, the cows, the farm, the cheese factory, and we put in these two large 750,000 gallon fermentation tanks. They're heated to 105 degrees, uh, recycling the heat off the engine, and that's a perfect environment to 
produce methane gas. We're intentionally producing methane gas, capturing it, and powering a huge internal combustion engine that, pop, that runs a 800 horse generator that uh, produces enough electricity to power the farm, the cheese factory, and about 300 homes in our community. So on all of our labels, all of our packaging, when we talk about our story, is award-winning cheese using uh, green renewable energy, produced with renewable energy. Look for this green logo on our packaging. We showed it to you in the slide. We have a little picture of it right here. And it, it really tells you our sustainable uh, green energy story. And it's on all of our cheeses, all of our packaging. And so now might be a time to talk about, gee, what, what do we make at Crave Brothers? We're famous for our fresh mozzarella. Right, we have our fresh mozzarella. Uh, 2017, we're very proud that we swept the fresh mozz category at the U.S. Cheese Championships. Uh, some one person said, "Gee, George, you had a clean sweep," and I said, "No, we had a fresh sweep, Michael." So that's that's uh, what we did with our cheese. When I was at the farm last year, there was uh, more than just renewable energy. You also were using everything back into the farm and cow bedding and all other areas. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about uh, you know that portion as well? Yeah, thanks, Michael. It is. Uh, uh, ultimate recycling, you know, farmers are the original recyclers and so what goes in must come out. So as we put more fuel in, more waste from the farm and the cheese factory, uh, the, the fermented out solids come out. We dry those with the methane also through a big furnace uh, fibers and that goes back under the cows for cow bedding. Eventually that all ends up returning back to the fields, the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, macro and micronutrients to grow our crops for next year. Again, one, once again, the ultimate recycling from comes in from the fields through the cows back to the to make the cheese and uh, back to the fields to start it all over again for next year. So that's what we do. I know if you go back to that slide showing the biodigesters, we have a really nice sign on one of the biodigester tanks, kind of showing that I call it the circle of life. It shows the cow, it shows the cheese, but it also shows the land and what we get from the biodigester system, which is heat and electricity and fibers. So you can't see it really well, maybe at your computer screen, but when you visit us and um, drive through the farm, you, you will see that uh, story. So we're always trying to tell the story of green energy, cow comfort, family business, uh, farming in harmony with the land, uh, we're not trying to be a tourist destination, but we love to educate our buyers and our customers about our unique story. So that's a little more about the biodigester system. So when you decided uh, to start up the farm and you decided to go with the breed of cows, what is the breed of cow and what was your reasoning for that? Well, we have Holstein cows, the, the purebred Holstein cow, it's the, uh, I call it the Chevrolet and Cadillac of the, of the uh, cow world. And really it's the, it's the Cadillac uh, because they produce the most milk, they produce the most fat, the most pro uh, protein. Uh, most of our research and our equipment is sized for the Holstein and that makes it the Chevy because everything that it's the, the research, the nutrition, our housing, it's really all geared around the Holstein cow, it's the average size Holstein cow. There's the Jerseys, Brown Swiss, Ayrshire, Milking Short, Horn Guernseys that are also out there in the world that about 95% of the milk produced in the country comes from Holstein cows. We produce a lot of protein. We have really good cows. We get a lot of milk per cow and that makes it where each cow uh, every day produce, gives us enough milk that we can make almost 12 pounds of cheese out of our milk. So with all the cheese choices, why mozzarella? Well, that's a, that's a really often asked question. And uh, 20 years ago, when I was looking at making cheese, I just went into a few uh, equipment makers and a few stores. And I said, if I make cheese, uh, you know, can I sell it here? And they said, what kind of cheese? I'm like, well, cheese. And uh, <laughs> we all know that when you really dig into it, there's all the way from the mozzarella to the, the alpine cheeses, the, the mold ripened cheeses, very soft cheeses, the French style, uh, uh, the big bouquet cheeses. And uh, after doing a, quite a bit of research, we decided that our farm fresh milk, our really sweet, crisp, farm fresh milk 
really lent itself to making really good fresh mozzarella, that fresh milky, the fior de latte, if you will, that the Italians talk about, the flour of the milk, and that really comes through in our, our mozzarella and our sweet cream mascarpone. From that, it expanded into making uh, queso Oaxaca, the same type of equipment, the same pasta, a lot of equipment, to melting the curds, to get the stretch, to get the stringiness and the moldability that we have for our for our string cheese and our queso Oaxaca. So uh, that, that grew into that. So right now we make uh, probably 60% uh, of our cheese is fresh mozz. The other 40% is uh, the, the uh, queso Oaxaca, and string cheese, and rated farmer's roll grade cheese. For a lot of the cheese makers in Wisconsin that, uh, that are doing aged cheeses, they're able to kind of hunker down right now and, and work through this. How are you holding up being that your product has got a very short shelf life and not having the capabilities of being able to put them into an aging cave? That's a really good question and we get it quite a bit from different our suppliers and neighbors, you know, how are you guys doing and really uh, about 60% of our business was retail to begin with when this situation started. Uh, we all know that retail has exploded and food service restaurant has really, uh, really uh, shrunk. Uh, so we lost some of our, our food service business, but our retail business and some of our industrial business that we made for different pizza companies has exploded. Frozen pizzas are huge, carry out pizzas are huge. And then the retail business has been, been really big. So we really um, expanded our production. Really, we're running wide open right now to meet demand. And of course, now we are into the fresh mod season. We always call it fresh mod season, July and August and early September when the tomatoes come to the season. Everybody's grabbing their caprese salad and their balsamic vinegar and their fresh cracked pepper and maybe a wine and then, uh, you know, repeat. So that's, that's what we're coming into right now. So we're really busy. All right. So, anything else you'd like to add uh, about the farm cheese making before we uh, settle into talking about some of these fantastic cheeses? Well, I think I think uh, talking about the virus and shopping and consumer trends, how they're shifting, and really what's the long term. We're all uh, in any business. We're wondering what the long term. Uh, carryover of this of this situation, these shutdowns, and what's going to happen. I I think that we I know that that our customers are trying more, they're experimenting more, they're willing to do more at home. And uh, we saw surprising to us, we saw our mascarpone business really expand in uh, in uh, May and June, uh, making a lot of mascarpone, which we usually don't make in the in the, that time of year. It's more of a holiday cheese and a heavier cream type of a cheese, but we we saw a big movement of that. So people were trying. They're watching the food networks. They're watching the the they're going online and looking for recipes. And when they say mascarpone, they went to the stores and bought it. And uh, we think that's going to carry over. We think this is going to be a trend that's going to stick around for quite a while. And we're really happy that people are home uh, trying things, making making different appetizers, different recipes, different uh, dinner items that they can really enjoy with for themselves and the family. And I would just add, Michael, uh, we're here every day making cheese, but more importantly, every day, Sunday, all day, every day, Sunday through Friday, Saturday, we're milking cows and we have great staff and great family. Uh, milking cows, harvesting wheat, harvesting alfalfa, uh, feeding cows, and um, getting us the high quality milk we need. So there's no staying home here for anyone. And uh, we no don't, sheltering. No yeah, sheltering. No sheltering. We got a lot of dedicated people that are working really hard, family and long-term employees. Right. So it might be time to taste fresh mozzarella, huh? Yeah, so uh, let's, uh, let's talk about that. Well, we have many different sizes. Uh, you might have one type of cheese, but then you have the, right in front, you have the little pearlinis, two gram pearls, the silaginis, the cherry size, uh, uh, the medallions, uh, the, the, they're molded, they're not sliced, the medallions. And I think they're really one of the 
becoming very popular now once people try them because they're very pillowy and very, very soft and have, still have that little skin, that little texture on the outside to hold the moisture in. And they make great sal sandwiches. Uh, they shingle really well with tomatoes. And uh, so that's really a popular size right now for us. Uh, the Silagini's again, of course, the golf ball size Bocconcini's, uh, those are, those are the, uh, uh, very popular also for slicing, slice them in half, if you will. And then uh, we also have the marinated. We have the eight ounce ball and the backpack log that are also uh, make a lot of right now. Those have a 60 day shelf life. And I think it's really good for retailers. They feel more confident buying a large volume of the, the backpack logs and balls because of the uh, shelf life of 60 days compared to the 32 days of the water pack cups. Um, so they can bring in a large volume. They don't have to uh, manage it quite as intensely. So that's very nice for them. Uh, we also have the marinated. It's very popular. You open it up, you get a toothpick and you're ready to go grab some bread and you're ready to go. Um, uh, we have mascarpone. Our sweet cream mascarpone is very popular. It's won many awards. It's uh, different than most that's out there. Why? I don't know because it's well, how we make it and we don't know how other uh, manufacturers or cheese makers make it. Uh, ours is made with sweet cream right off of our milk, uh, right from the farm. So we're capturing that really fresh sweet cream flavor and uh, cooking it up and uh, putting it in the cup. So it's really good. We also have the chocolate mascarpone. So then we have the rope cheese. We, uh, we have the farmer's rope, which was our version of string cheese. Uh, we call it farmer's rope just because it's from the farm and it uh, kind of represents, uh, you know, a halter or rope. We have the queso Oaxaca that's braided. We tie it up in a ball and it's queso Oaxaca, very popular with the uh, Latino population, uh, highly melting, put on a lot of their quesadillas and enchiladas and, and, and such. So very, very nice cheese, make a lot of that. And then we have our of course, if you come to Wisconsin, you call us the cheddar heads or the, the you know the curds. Uh, that's what we make also twice a week. We make white curds one day and we make yellow curds another day. So uh, popular, sell it most of it very local. Um, comes out of the bat, goes in a bag and on a truck and off to the market. So people wait in line. Believe it or not, people wait in line. They have a sign out in front, fresh curds today. People know it. They line up and when it pulls in, it, it, it sells like crazy. And you can get all of our cheeses on our website through our website store, if you don't happen to be in the neighborhood. All right, so uh, uh, let's uh, step to some recipes for uh, what you got going there. Okay. So would you wanna do some fresh moths for starters? One <laughs> thing is the common caprese salad and um, we shingled our medallions with a sliced tomato. We're just getting tomatoes in Wisconsin now, luckily, but I'm sure around the country they've been uh, ripe sooner. And easy, easy to do, olive oil, basil, fresh moths, medallions, and tomatoes. But another favorite, if you grab a skewer, is to just take the silicone. And so this is the medallions, the skewer over there. The cherry size, or ciliegine, with a cherry tomato and a, a leaf of basil is so easy, popular uh, item for a picnic, and you just need some fancy toothpicks. Uh, everyone grows basil, has cherry tomatoes, so buy some chiliagini or silaginis, we call them for ease. A cherry size uh, fresh moths. We have another item, our marinated uh, that George talked about. How about drizzling that marinade on baguette toasts along with some of your fresh veggies? So the marinade marinates the cheese, but also your bread, your, your, your veggies, and a great uh, charcuterie board idea. So we just love different applications for our um, fresh mozzarella. On our website, we have many ideas. Another one is a wild rice blueberry salad with the pearl size. Blueberries are in season now around the country. So blueberries, pearls, wild rice, it's a wonderful, healthy salad. It's beautiful. I think we have a shot of it on the uh, handout or over the slides that you're looking at. And of course, George mentioned bocconcinis. We have a customer that loves slicing bocconcinis on sandwiches. So use your egg slicer if you don't have a fresh mozzarella slicer. Um, and there is a shot of our wonderful blueberry wild rice salad. Again, that recipe is on our website. 
and then we're showing you a few ideas for mascarpone. We've been lucky to have some recipe contests, some family and uh, staff that have given us many wonderful ideas for fresh mops and mascarpone. One of our most famous is our chocolate mascarpone pie. It's just three easy ingredients, chocolate, mascarpone, and uh, the flavoring of your choice, like Kahlua coffee or bourbon. Uh, you put all of that in an Oreo cookie crust. We also have um, another shot that you just saw was a pasta shell stuffed with mascarpone and kind of a Thousand Island dressing with corned beef. So it's a Reuben stuffed shell, fun for St. Patrick's Day or when it starts getting cold out again and you want casseroles. And then a few of the slides you're seeing are famous lemon mascarpone tarts. It's just lemon curd and mascarpone with a little cookie tart that you fill the item, the tart full of the lemon curd. Uh, I came up with a um, margarita pie that you see for Cinco de Mayo. And that was margarita mix and some whipped cream in our mascarpone along with lime curd. So we have fun with lemon curd, lime curd, and mascarpone. You see a soup there, and uh, when it gets cold, we all hunker down for our mascarpone mushroom soup, another favorite of the visitors to Cray Brothers, and that recipe is also on our website. Um, we have many fun applications. We're kind of beyond tiramisu here. Tiramisu is what everyone thinks of when they know we make mascarpone, but I'm Italian and I never had tiramisu till I made it. So it's been kind of fun to do things beyond tiramisu. Uh, we also have a dessert board idea that you're seeing here with some skewers of fresh mozzarella and fruit. How refreshing, you can use mint instead of basil. There's our chocolate mascarpone or mascarpone mixed with chocolate and a dollop of that along with fresh mascarpone and berries. So that's a dessert board idea with fresh mozz and mascarpone. Then we have a few other slides that show a dessert board concept for different seasons, like fall. You could do a pumpkin trifle that's mascarpone layered with pumpkin or a caramel sauce. We have a caramel sauce recipe that you could serve with apples and that features mascarpone. And Again, a plain mascarpone. This little trio is some of the favorites, the pumpkin trifle, the lemon tart, and the chocolate pie. Uh, we also have a fun Christmas holiday dessert board idea. I know it's hard to think about, but it will come. And that would, that'll be coming up next. That will show little chocolate mascarpone balls, um, the chocolate mascarpone pie, fresh mascarpone with cranberries. So, we, we certainly never run out of ideas for using our sweet cream mascarpone throughout the year and um, love promoting the idea of beyond tiramisu, savory and sweet, not just the sweet applications. Um, even making a Alfredo type sauce is, is fun to do with our mascarpone. So uh, we're beyond tiramisu, we're promoting that sweet cream mascarpone and always enjoying input from others. If you have a great idea out there, send it to us. We'd love to talk about it on our social media and include it on our website. So what do you think, Michael? Well, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I went with the traditional cheese board and uh, charcuterie. Uh, I had a chance to open up their wonderful gift pack that you sent me, and I went through several, and I chose the, the marinated mozzarella because I really love the way that you do that. Uh, the beautiful herbs that you use and how simple it really is. And so I wanted to kind of give some options that you can do and charcuterie has always been one of my favorites. So I'm using the three little pigs here, uh, the two types, the herbs of Provence and just the air dried sausage. For, for both of these and they go so well. I mean, literally you can just take a toothpick and wrap the mozzarella or skewer the mozzarella and then wrap some of the charcuterie and then a little bit of the olives. And these are Davina's, uh, the uh, Castrona and the Calma, uh, uh, Calmada. 
And uh, I love the saltiness. I love the earthiness that you get from both of those. And then give it a little bit of spice. I'm using also the sweet mini peppers and the little sweet and spicy baby gherkins. So you can really have a very interesting cheese board that allows you to do a lot of different things. And if you didn't want to have the marinade, you can just drop in just the regular mozzarella, which would be a lot of fun. And for the pairing on this, I decided that um, uh, I, was, I was weighing, because we had talked earlier about uh, do we do wine or do we do beer? And uh, I decided to go with a, a beer. And this is uh, Cigar City. This is their, uh, what's known as their Gallabera, which is uh, kind of like the, the shirts that the uh, Cubans wear. Uh, and uh, this is a Citra Pale Ale, which its job is to help cleanse with all this rich flavors and to make it a little bit lighter. So that's the direction that I went. And then we talked about using a Prosecco and uh, this Rustico is a really nice uh, choice of, of different things that you can do with that. So that's the direction I went with the mozzarella. Wonderful. I have another favorite idea I wanted to share. Uh, beets are in season and we have a great recipe that's just sliced beets after you parboil them. And you put mascarpone in between the layers. And I think you have a shot of that. And it's a wonderful recipe on our website, but you can kind of see it and make it on your own without even a recipe. There's just a few herbs and spices added to the mascarpone and um, layered in between the beautiful purple beets. It really looks nice. And if you like beets, which I know George does, um, it's fantastic, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's really good. And you can either go the savory route or even, even drizzle a little honey over it to, to really bring out the sweetness of it. And that kind of uh, cuts a little bit of that bitterness of the, the beets, really uh, pairs well with that, that earthiness of the beets. But um, yeah. a lot of different ideas. And our neighbor, uh, our good friend, Randy, came up with that recipe also. And, uh, and you can really shingle it and stack it, really make it look and I have, uh, that, that slide, Michael, is two slides after that spring dessert board that you're showing. One other fun savory idea is the pizza that we make with mascarpone. Now, go figure, but it's a candy bacon, sweet onion, fig reduction pizza with dollops of mascarpone. So that's also shown, it's right after this. This is our famous chocolate mascarpone pie. I think the next slide is the beet recipe we talked about and then the pizza. So again, a couple more favorites. There you're seeing how, how wonderful you can make beets. I'm not a beet fan, but the people that are really like this. Yeah, yeah. You can put the croutons or pine nuts or candied nuts of some sort, or peppery nuts with that. Uh, uh, really interesting. And then the next slide is that famous pizza. We've often served that to visitors at the Cheese Factory. Actually, it's one after this. That's a chicken Florentine mascarpone little appetizer. W wonderful idea, again, from a recipe contest. Soup that we talked about, sorry. And then I think the pizza's coming up to, to give you an idea. Yeah, it is, it's the last one. It's a, a beautiful uh, recipe. And I think what makes it is the candied bacon right along with the mascarpone. Cooked down some, some sweet onions, uh, candied bacon on a crunch, crunchy crust, and then the mascarpone. And when we first uh, tried it, we were afraid of the mascarpone just melting like butter, but it really holds up. It even will caramelize a little bit on top and burn just a little bit, which really gives you a great flavor and uh, really a fantastic pizza. Well, I went simple again. Uh, I didn't want to get too crazy with it. Uh, so uh, I have uh, just the plain mascarpone and I decided to go with the fat toad. And I, I really love this caramel uh, that it has. It makes it so easy and uh, 
uh, it pairs really very, very well. So this is the caramel Vermont maple, the cold hollow uh, maple syrup with it, which is just decadent, you know. And they have vanilla, which I thought about that being really fun, or chocolate, but you already got that. So I thought I'd do maple syrup with that. And then uh, Effie's, this is their uh, pecan, uh, the nut cake, and it is a nice biscuit. And you just need a little bit of crunchiness. But if you want some fruit, uh, you know, just adding a, a piece of the strawberry on there is, is probably just more than enough to add a little bit additional flavor. Uh, for pairing, uh, I thought that the uh, Moscato would be really fun. I use the, I think it's a Six Daughters uh, Moscato out of Italy. Uh, but because of the, the fat toad having all that richness and the effies, I really wanted to bring a little bit more uh, umph, umph to it. And so this is 881 Bay Brewing, another Tampa brewery. And this is their coffee porter. And I thought that that would be really fun putting these guys together as uh, kind of like an over the top dessert. Mm. I'm kind of, Michael, I'm, I'm uh, disappointed you didn't tell us we could be drinking on your podcast here, so. <laughs> you have to bring in our samples. <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, after this, you deserve, uh, you know, an extra one. Yeah, we'll throw one back for you. All right. We'll often pair our mascarpone with a biscoff cookies, or maybe George could show the cookies because they're slightly this one right there, off the screen, a right. pirouette. Um, I love all your ideas, Michael. With the, the nice little, you know, and, and I'm a big one for, for even a good red wine with some, some sweetness with a good red wine and some chocolate uh, uh, and some savory types of, of cream that's with uh, a wine also. And we have blueberries and raspberries, but any kind of berry goes great with uh, mascarpone. And it's so visual, kind of the red, we were going red, white, and blue, still being festive uh, for the month of July. There we go. <laughs> so you can make some really nice, and, and the fruit really goes goes well. You get that sweet, creamy richness of the mascarpone, and then you pop a, pop a fruit flavor in there, which is great. Super simple. We do a lot with social media, so please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And um, again, you can order at cravecheese.com any of our cheeses or three different gift boxes if you're into gift giving for the holidays or a birthday. Uh, we have a sampler that includes one of each of our favorite cheeses or two mascarpone, I think is in that one, as well as marinated, two curds, and um, rope. Also, we have a chocolate mascarpone pie gift box and a caramel. Uh, gift box that has some nice fancy nuts along with a uh, caramel recipe and our mascarpone. So some fun ideas and we're happy to ship all over. That's the one way you can find our cheese is uh, through our website, if not stores across the country. And we're happy to, to really work with anyone. Uh, we are coming out with a brand new, very extensive website with recipes different lengths, and different photos. events, yeah. photos, and also covering what we're doing at the farm. Some of the cows, some of our famous cows uh, that uh, people like to follow and, and keep up to date on. Our son, Brian, the licensed cheese maker, he has some great drone shots that we're gonna be trying to put online and show some of our harvesting and our field work and some more reviews of our buildings, which are really a, a great addition to that also. So be sure to keep watching that and keep following it. Yeah, I would just add, we, we're lucky to get awards on our cheeses. We're proud of that. But we also have some show cows that go to cow shows that get awards, whether it's State Fair, County Fair, or the Wisconsin State Holstein Show. Uh, some of those shows have been canceled this year, but we're looking forward to next year. And we love promoting our cows, too. So honestly, we're one of the few cheese makers where you'd go to the website and you wouldn't just read about cheese awards. You'd read about cow awards. And that's unique to us and our story. To emphasize that uh, the farmers are out here, the dairy farmers of Wisconsin are out here working every day uh, through, through the 
good weather, the bad weather. We're enjoying summer now, but we have some weather when you watch the news and see the winds blowing sideways and the snow blowing sideways. That's not fake news. That really happens here in Wisconsin, the upper Midwest. So we, we work through those days and our staff works through those days and it's a 24 seven, uh, 365 operation running a dairy farm. And, and we don't, and we really encourage the, the consumers don't, don't take their food supply for granted. No matter what's on their plate, don't take it for granted. There's a lot of effort and thought behind that. Debbie? Debbie? You know, thank you, Michael. Appreciate the opportunity. We're about family, farmstead, and green energy, and happy to tell our story through this app opportunity. All right. All right, then. So uh, it's been a great pleasure being able to hear the story and uh, taste some of the cheeses. Uh, this is actually the mozzarella cheese board is going to be my dinner tonight. So I am so looking forward to that. And uh, I appreciate you sending in the additional cheeses because I haven't had a chance to try all of them. And this is a great opportunity here in Tampa in the summer with the fresh fruits and vegetables. So this is going to be wonderful. Thank you so much. Welcome, Michael. Enjoy it. All right. So again, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time today and your great recipes and cheeses. And uh, I'm so happy to hear that you guys are doing well during this and uh, keep up the great work. And we'll hopefully see you sometime in the near future on the farm. Hope so. You're always yes. welcome. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.